Uh, next speaker is uh, Professor Ana Perez Castillo. She's the head of the group of the Department of Experimental Modeling in Human Diseases at the Institute of Biomedical Research, CECIC, University Autónoma of de Madrid. Um, and uh, her talk uh, today is entitled Phosphodiesterase 7 as a therapeutic target in Parkinson's disease. Okay, thanks, uh, Maria, for the nice introduction, and I would like also to, to thank uh, to the organizing committee of this Cybernet meeting for providing me with this opportunity to present some of the research we have been working on over the last uh, several years. Well, okay, I'm not going to talk anything, of course, in this audience uh, regarding uh, neurodegeneration of Parkinson's disease. Just to say that all of you know uh, the current therapies for the, these uh, devastating disorders are not, uh, are not very, very good. And we need new therapeutic uh, approaches. And such as uh, new drugs with disease modifying uh, activities and also in my opinion and also I, I, I remember uh, Carlos Vicario said the other day that uh, also it would be interesting to uh, be able to induce uh, pharmacological modulation of uh, endogenous neuro neurogenesis towards uh, maybe the dopaminergic phenotype in the case of Parkinson's disease or other neuronal cell types uh, in other brain disorders. <laughs> Well, the title of my talk, as you, as you said, uh, as you saw before, is uh, um, the effect of uh, phosphodiesterase uh, inhibitors uh, on the specific in Parkinson's disease and also in another uh, brain disorders. Uh, I'm not going to explain a lot about phosphodiesterase, as all, all of you know which are the, the enzymes that catalyze the, the degradation of psychic AMP and psychic GMP. Uh, it's a very complex family of, of genes. There are 11 families uh, that comprise uh, uh, 21 genes, and each of these genes has a uh, different splicing, and so the, uh, there are many isoforms. <laughs> And specifically, uh, the PD7, which is the, the target we have been working on, uh, it has is uh, codified by two genes, uh, and each of the genes has three uh, different uh, gave rise right to the different proteins, uh, uh, and uh, PDA, PD7A, one, two, three, and PD7B. The PD7A is, uh, it has a much more ubiquitous uh, localization, whereas PD7B is more restricted to the brain. And as uh, Lupe Mengot, so some years ago, the, um, okay. well, the uh, expression of PD7B is, is high in the striatum and also in the hippocampus. However, uh, this is mRNA levels, okay? So uh, the protein levels were not described so far. And uh, we found uh, very low levels of PD7B in corte hippocampus and striatum, and uh, uh, practically nothing in the substantia nigra pass compacta. Uh, when we first uh, started to analyze the effect of PD7 inhibitors on neuroprotection and neurodegeneration, we did observe that uh, the treatment uh, of, uh, of the injection of uh, lipopolysaccharide or c hydroxydopamine into the substantia nigra pass compact of adult rats uh, induced uh, a significant increase in the levels of uh, PD7 uh, PD7 in this uh, in this brain, so uh, we wanted to better uh, to further analyze uh, how this uh, regulation took place. This are preliminary data, I had to say. Uh, well, first we observed that um, that uh, the expression of uh, or the increase in the expression of, of this PD, PD7 is uh, detected in neurons, astrocytes as well as microglial cells. This increase 
this increase was also uh, detected in uh, in vitro models of uh, Parkinson's disease, such as the neuroblastoma cell line uh, SHSY51, uh, and you can see here after the the incubation of, of these cells uh, with uh, six hydroxy dopamine. This was also observed in primary cultures of uh, mesencephalic cultures, and as you can see here, there is a significant increase in the levels of this uh, of this uh, protein, which was also detected in the uh, arterial PS or six hydroxy dopamine uh, treatment in this case which is also detecting in neurons, uh, astrocyte, and microglial cells. Well, uh, although not shown here, uh, we also have observed that uh, the levels of mRNA are increased in the, um, by qPCR, uh, increase in uh, cell culture treated with uh, LPS and or uh, c dopamine. So we next wanted to analyze if this uh, regulation was a direct one by inducing the transcription of the gene. So we cloned a fragment of about uh, 700 base pairs of the promoter of the PD7 gene. And we, by in silico analysis, we found uh, some put putative uh, binding sites for different transcription factors that could be responsible for the um, this induction of uh, PD7 after an inflammatory uh, stimulus. Uh, and as you can see here, we, we performed trans uh, transfection experiment and we observed a, a significant increase uh, in the SH uh, dopaminated cell lines as well as in uh, more in astrocline primary cultures after the treatment with uh, cis hydroxy dopamine and uh, or L LPS in the case of the, of the membrane cultures. Uh, we, of course, have to analyze this uh, better. We have to perform uh, deletion, deletion analysis, mutagenesis, chip analysis, and so on. Well, uh, I hope this uh, will be ready by the end of this year. And now I will pass just to show you the, uh, we first, uh, our first uh, uh, findings uh, regarding the the neuroprotective the, the neuroprotective effect of the p 7 inhibition, and uh, we have uh, experienced with different compounds, different p 7 inhibitors, and we we definitely have decided to work with a, a small heterocyclic compound named S14. With a very potent inhibitor of PD7, is able to cross the uh, blood-brain barrier, and uh, its effects are very, very potent in neuroprotection and neuroinflammation, as, as you can see, could see later. So uh, we first um, analyzed the effect of this uh, compound in the, the neuroblastoma cell line uh, SH. S151 uh, after treatment with 6 hydroxy dopamine, and as you can see here, this, the addition of this compound can be, uh, I mean, when you treat this, this culture, of course, with 6 hydroxy dopamine, you observe uh, an increase in cell death, as uh, detected by measuring active uh, caspase 3 and annexin 5, which is almost completely uh, reversed by the addition to the calcium medium to the S14 compound. Uh, this is just a quantification of the data, and just uh, to show you that uh, this, um, uh, this, the effect of S14 is almost uh, completely reversed. When you also could treat this culture with uh, a PK inhibitor, uh, one town is like the H89, and also with RP, uh, psychic AMP. So uh, we believe that this uh, uh, pro survival effect of this compound is mediated through the psychic AMP pathway. Uh, we also detected uh, we also detected this same effect in uh, embryonic uh, primary culture for uh, treated with S14. So with LP with. Cis hydroxy dopamine or LPS, 
and as you can see here there is a lower uh, I mean there is a increase in the viability of this uh, of this uh, lactate treatment with the S14 compound uh, as I told you before uh, this uh, this agent is also a uh, able to have a, to pre or present a very potent anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, this is a primary embryonic cell culture treated with LPS, and as you can see, there is a significant increase in the level of two pro-inflammatory agents, such as COX-2 and TNF-alpha, which is uh, this uh, in induction and expression of this uh, two protein is uh, almost completely reduced by uh, the treatment of the, cult of the culture with the S14. And this is increased, uh, uh, slide just to show you that the effect, uh, the anti inflammatory effect of the S14 compound uh, uh, appears also to be mediated by the uh, static MP pathways in both uh, inhibitors of this pathway, the uh, 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 H89 and RP static MP. Uh, annulate the, the effects of uh, ODS-14. And also there is an uh, increase in the nitric levels that is also uh, reversed by the treatment with the S-14 compound. Uh, this is just to show you that uh, uh, in effect the um, S-14 compound is in, able to increase but this is a Rolipan and BRL, sorry I didn't tell you before, that are commercial, uh, the BRL is a commercial uh, phosphodiesterase 7 inhibitor, the Rolipan is a commercial, uh, commercial available inhibitor of PD4, and uh, all the three compounds have uh, a significant or increase, has a significant effect increasing the levels of the psychic AMP in a cellular culture, and also we, we observe um, phosphorylation of the Kreft protein, so all of these data indicate that uh, the, the effect uh, that we are observing in survival and also in inflammation uh, induced by two insults such as the neurotoxin 6 hydroxydopamine and also the LPS or lipopolysaccharide are indeed mediated by this, uh, this psychic MP pathway. These are uh, the effect of this compound in an in vivo model of, uh, in, in this case, LPS. We also observed the same thing in, in, in rats treated uh, or injected with the uh, 6 hydroxydopamine. We detected a significant uh, cell death uh, of dopaminergic cells in the substantia nigra pass compacta, uh, which is uh, partially reversed or mostly reversed by the injection of, uh, with uh, the S14 compound and uh, the commercially available, the BRL. And this is uh, also uh, just to show you that uh, the activation of microglial cells induced by the LPS injection is almost completely reversed by the treatment with the uh, S14 compound of BRL. And uh, finally, uh, just to say that the, uh, this, uh, the treatment with S14 and this, uh, uh, they effect, its effect in the inflammation and cell death that takes place after uh, c dopamine or LPS uh, uh, lesions is, um, uh, it reflects, uh, it is reflected also in the rotational behavior of these animals, so we, we perform uh, motor analysis uh, using apomorphine. When you inject apomorphine to a lesion animal, you get a, you get a, um, uh, they start to, to rotate, and this uh, motor behavior is also very elevated by after the injection of the of this animal with the S14. Well, just just is to. Uh, we further confirm that, in fact, the, P, the S14 compound is acting through a PD7 inhibitor by using lentiviral particles containing SHRNA by, uh, directed, specifically directed to the PD7 gene. This, this is just to show you that the, this injection of lentiviral particles uh, is very effective, reducing the, the levels of uh, 
of this protein. And as you can see here, this is an animal injected uh, lesion with cis hydroxydopamine. This is Estancia nigra, this is the striatum. As you can see, as, uh, as expected, the injection of cis hydroxydopamine results in a significant decrease in the number of uh, dopaminary cells, which is uh, reduced when uh, these animals are also injected with a specific. Uh, SHRNA contained in the, these lentiviral particles. Sorry, this, this is a, a, a control um, lentiviral uh, containing a non-targeting non uh, SHRNA. This is very, very, maybe a little bit complex uh, slide, but just, uh, just to show you that uh, um, the knockout of the PD7 uh, expression also results in a very potent uh, anti-inflammatory uh, effect, as we already observed with the S14 injection in both, uh, in two more different models of, uh, of, Park of animal Parkinson's disease, cis hydroxydopamine and LPS. This is uh, just to show you again the, the rotational behavior, and in fact it's the same thing uh, that we uh, detected uh, by injecting the S14 uh, agent. Uh, we, we had uh, the same results uh, regarding the rotational behavior of these animals. Just uh, to show you that the, the inhibition of the PD7 enzyme is also, appears to be also um, neuroprotective in other uh, models of brain diseases, including also uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, well, as I told you at the beginning of my talk, um, we think that maybe if you, the stimulation of uh, endogenous neurogenesis uh, together with the, a drug that could be a very potent neuroprotective uh, uh, compound may be, uh, may be helpful for a new treatment for these uh, disorders. And that is the inhibition of the, the enhanced uh, neuro, endogenous neurogenesis. So we performed an experiment, um, one of those in, in basal conditions, uh, looking at the neurogen new neurogenesis uh, in the subgranular zone of the dental gyrus of the hippocampus, as well as in the subventricular zone. And another set of experiments uh, was performed uh, in animals in a, uh, injected in a model of, with Parkinson's disease, an animal injected either with c hydroxydopamine or lipopolysaccharide. So we, we, well, these are in vitro experiment. All of you know, so know with this neurosphere as cultures are. So just to show you that the, the addition of this compound induces the proliferation uh, and the number of, uh, of this uh, neurosphere. Here uh, below, you can see the, the quantification of these, uh, of these images. Uh, the PD7 inhibition is also able to induce uh, differentiation towards uh, dopaminergic, oh, sorry, uh, neuronal phenotype as shown back uh, via tubulin staining and also uh, MAP staining. This is uh, this are in vivo experiment. So in that this occur, that this uh, promotion of neurogenesis occur, occurs not, so, not only in in vitro but also in vivo. These are animals injected for a short period of time with DS14 and with BRDU to detect uh, proliferation of these cells. And this is the subgranular zone of the dental gyrus of the hippocampus, and as you can see. The injection of, of uh, S14 induces the, the number of new, of new progenitor cells as shown by double uh, immunostaining with BRDU and, and nesting. Nesting is a very known uh, marker for uh, progenitor cells. Uh, this in, uh, induction in progenitor cells uh, is not only, uh, it's also, I mean, 
we also detected an, an induction in the number of uh, neuroblasts as, as some, but the stain staining with the double coating, which is a marker of uh, a neurobla neuroblast and immature neurons. This is also, as you can see here, the, the, oops, the subgranular zone of the, the entire gyrus. You can see also that uh, not only there are more cells stained for double coating, but also the projections of these neurons are also uh, significantly longer. Uh, same thing occurs in the subventricular zone of this animal treated with the, the compound. Uh, as we can see here, there is in, in yellow, uh, there is an increase also in the number of new progenitors, uh, as shown again by double monostaining with BRDU and, and nesting, and also a significant increase in the number of uh, Double coating cell is in the subepidermal zone, and a, a thicker, as you can see, a, a thicker uh, area where you can see this new neuroblast form in these animals. Finally, we wanted to see if this uh, new form of neuroblast and, and progenitor cells uh, were able to migrate and to integrate into the granule, granule cells of the hippocampus or the the entire of the hippocampus, and also in the glomerular cells of the uh, subventricular zone in the olfactory valve. And uh, these are uh, orthogonal view, very complicated, but this is, well, this is uh, the maximum projection of, uh, of uh, coronal section of uh, an animal controlled or injected with the S14. And you, this is an amplification of the image, the BRDU channel and the, and the new and is a marker for uh, mature neurons. And uh, as you can see here, uh, this is uh, a yellow cell that is double, double stained for this marker. So this, is, uh, this means that the, the new neuroblast form, when you when you have uh, uh, a longer period of time treating these animals, uh, these progenitor cells have these neuroblasts and able to migrate and integrate into the subgranular, the, the granular zone, sorry, of the, of the hippocampus. And also to the right here, uh, this is the, the olfactory valve. And you also can see that the, here, that with these animals are treated with the S14, you can see that uh, double labeling of cells inside the glomerular cells of the of this olfactory valve, indicating that this is finished. Okay. And uh, well, this is only just to show you that uh, this uh, neurogenesis induced by the, uh, this uh, S14 compound uh, occurs also in uh, Parkinson's animal models. Uh, this is very interesting because, uh, as we see, we can uh, observe, this is only a, a slide, uh, that mm, there is a, an increase also in the number of new uh, dopaminergic cells form, such as you can see here by the double standing with BIDU and anti-H. So this, uh, in my opinion, is, is quite interesting. And uh, just the summary, you, of course, no, I'm not going to read it here because I'm out of time. And thanks to, my, to all my group and also to the collaboration of uh, uh, Dr. Santos and Gine at the University of Complutense and Ana Martina and Catman Hill at uh, the CIB. And thanks, of course, to all for your attention. A very short question because you are. Thanks very much. Uh, one very quick question. Uh, I, I am very curious about the inhibitor compound that you have been using and the selectivity of the compound. Okay. Okay, because, because you know, I, I think it is an azaquinoline, so maybe it might be also inhibiting GSK3 beta or other things. So. Well, the, I mean, the PD7A and the PD7B, I didn't tell you because of the lack of time, are 70% uh, almost homologous. 
very, very similar. So uh, this, this the compound also is able to give in PD7, uh, PD7A. However, the data we, uh, that I show you with the uh, RNA interference for the uh, PD7 is specifically, sorry, I didn't tell you, for PD7B. It doesn't inhibit PD7A, and, and again, and moreover, uh, this uh, compound is very inefficient inhibiting also PD, PD7-4, so it doesn't have any emetic side effect, emetic uh, effect, and it doesn't inhibit PD7-3, so it doesn't also have any cardiotoxic effect, if that's what you wanted to, to know. Yes, and also GSK3-beta, because, you know, maybe some of the results that you have on neuro, on the, on the needs, on the... It, it could be related to inhibition of GSK3 beta. The, the, the neural stem cells yeah. are, uh, you know, you have higher proliferation of these cells in the, in the conditions of inhibition of GSK3. And um, the exactly. compound that you've been using, it seems to me that could be inhibiting GSK3. But, I mean, it's, uh, okay. Yeah, but it's PD7, you say GSK3? Uh, GSK3. No, yeah, no. <laughs> Well, I don't okay. know. I saw you the result with the PD-7. I don't know what you mean with the JSK-3. Because you were presenting the results with the subventricular zone yeah. with the inhibitor. And I, my question is about the selectivity of the inhibitor. If you can rule out other effects that could be... Totally. PD-7. <laughs> it, does, it, doesn't have, uh, it doesn't touch at all JSK-3. Uh, that's it. Not all the kinases, no. I think we should move to the next speaker. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.